started Monday, our, our annual 21 day fasting and prayer. <laughs> you know, I've always I've been saying this, and I'm going to keep saying it because sometimes people have a mis misconstrued or because emphasis is placed on certain aspects of it. Fasting does not change God. Fasting doesn't twist God's hand, I mean his arm, and make him do something. Fasting is not like putting something in the box and God comes out. You know. <laughs> Fasting doesn't, you know, and I, I'm, I'm going to say this, and, but I'm going to I'm going to uh, make it make sense. Because see, a lot of times people say, man, man, I fasted and God moved. Well, God didn't move. God wasn't stuck. You moved. Your heart moved. I was saying during prayer a minute ago, uh, prayer doesn't make faith work. Faith makes prayer work. Fasting doesn't make God work. Um... Fasting makes us work. Um, fasting affects us. It causes us to, if we do it right, now, <laughs> we do it right, it causes us to kind of unclutter our lives with stuff that doesn't really matter. I know when I, when I fast, I get really sensitive to stuff that just doesn't matter. I'm like, why are we even talking about this? I almost get irritation. My, 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 my spirit of irritation goes up. Because something just don't, that's why I don't even, I, something that when I'm fasting, I don't even expose myself to certain things because I don't, I don't need that. My mind, the way my, I know how my mind works. You know how your mind works? My mind works. I'm, I'm a very, very intense analyzer. Almost to the level of criticize. Why do you do that? That don't make no sense. What was he thinking? You know, I go through all of it. I don't even know the people. You know, I'm watching TV show. That don't even, you know that ain't even, I don't, I, that ain't in the script. You know, I come up with stuff like that. But, um, but, but fasting causes me, causes us to, to lay aside this thing. Most, most people are dominated by the body and the, this three-dimensional world has a lot of control over us, but we know we're spirit, soul, and body. We're, we're, we're three-dimensional people. And so fasting causes the flesh, the body part of us, to, we send a signal to it, you're not controlling me. I, you don't make me eat just cause the clock hits 1.30. You know, I got power over you. It's time for me to go to bed. I don't need to be going to that cookie jar again. <laughs> You know, so you, you're telling your body, you don't let, see, and if you can, watch this now, if you can ever get, get your body under control, here's the whole reason for it, get your body under control, that when you get to the word, and you got the word, and you don't see anything happening, your body don't tell you, there's nothing happening, you don't let that control you. Did y'all get that? Because see, the last person, I pray nothing happened. But because the body is telling you and the soul is telling you, well, it don't look like anything happened. But your spirit, we're spirit being. And everything God does, it, just because I don't see it doesn't mean it doesn't happen. It didn't happen. And just because I don't see something doesn't mean nothing is happening right now. I don't know about you, but if I prayed, it's happening. Yeah. You didn't hear what I said. I said if I prayed and prayed according to the word, it's happening. Yeah. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the thing that God had prepared for them that love him. God prepares some things for me. If I pray according to his will, I know that he hurt me. If I know that he hurt me, I know that I have. It just hadn't come out here where I can see it yet. And so there's a behavior that, um, that we, we um, have to follow. Anyway, let me say this. Fasting signals to our lives that this season is not business as usual. Fasting causes us to move away from the things of the world and draw near to God. And fasting helps us transition into the next season of God that God has for us. Fasting helps us, my main thing here, my main thing. Fasting helps us refocus 
and recalibrate. Now, um, a lot of times people fast and they, they, they don't eat or whatever, and that's good, I guess. But we're talking fasting and praying. So my praying ought to, ought to be praying more. Yeah, and I ought to be in the things of God more because, and this is the big thing. God, when God showed me this years ago, I was like, wow, that's the difference. And I'm going to hit a little bit tonight. But if I'm saying I'm not eating, and, and, but I'm still engaged, remember we called it what? If I'm plugged into the world, I might as well be eating. I'd rather you eat five Weeby Buffalo Burgers. I wouldn't have me one of them mugs last week. Man, it was good. Weeby, it, Weeby. Okay, we don't need to be talking about food tonight, do we? $8.49 burger, but it was good. But um, <laughs> I'd, rather, I'd rather you eat and starve, starve what you allow into your, into your mind and heart. Because just like faith comes by hearing, unbelief comes by hearing. And if you're plugged into the world and plugged into, see my, my uh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't put this on airplane mode. I'm gonna do it right now. I didn't know the stock market went down 300 points today till I got ready to get up. I'm like, Jesus, 300 points? Didn't it go down 300 the other day too? Okay, I can see, see y'all ain't want to act like y'all ain't listening. I, that's good. But, cause see my mind started analyzing. Oh Lord, I wonder what my, how much money I lost, but I ain't thinking about it. My God supplies all my needs. Actually, praise the Lord. It's all good. God will show you what to do. Okay, what I'm going to talk about today is receiving from God while you're fasting. Go to Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to receive manifestations this year. We're going to receive manifestations this year. Okay, let me try it over here. We're going to receive manifestations this year. Okay, now, I hope I can get through this first part. Ephesians 2 8 says this For by grace you have been what? Saved through what? And not of yourselves. It is a gift from God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Okay, now, what were you saved by? What were you saved by? What were you saved by? No, what were you saved by? See, I got y'all all messed up. Man. See, just the, that one emphasis I said changed the whole complexion. What did you get saved by? Grace. Grace. How did you get it? Grace. What did you get saved by? Grace. How did you get it? Grace is everything God did. You weren't here. It was independent of you. Had nothing to do with you. It's everything God did for us and provided salvation for us, right? Okay, so and before you were even born, grace provided that. We're saved by what? Grace. Now, how do we get to that grace? And pull, how do we get over that grace and pull it over to the? By faith. Okay. I did that for a reason. Because everything you receive from God is by faith. Everything you receive from God is by faith. Now that's exciting. Everything you receive from God is by faith. What did he say? Everything you receive. See, see my fast, I don't receive because I fast and pray. Now, fasting and prayer puts me in a position of heightened faith, but I don't receive because I pray and fast. Everything that God promised, everything that God says I can have, everything that grace has provided comes to me. How? By faith. Ah. Uh, now, go to Colossians chapter 2. Thank you, Jesus. 
We're going to have some manifestation this year, saints. Yes, sir. Some of y'all going to get some manifestation so fast, it's going to make your hair. <laughs> okay, Colossians 2, 6 says this. As you have therefore, as, there, as you therefore have what? Saved. What does that mean? Saved. Got saved. <laughs> okay. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so do what? Amen. How did you receive Jesus? Okay, you receive them how? Amen. By faith. So Paul is saying, the way you receive Jesus, you heard the word, you believed it, and by faith you received it. Now he's saying, the way you received him, that's the way everything else yeah. works from here on out. When you, if you want to receive from God. Everything works like that. Everything works like that. And the reason I'm saying this is because a lot of time, if we're not careful, we'll slip over to, but I'm praying 21 days, God got to move. No, he don't. God don't move because you didn't eat. <laughs> no, I know this sounds, it sounds comical, but sometimes we have that mentality. Now, you're not eating and, and exercising faith will push you in a place you've never been before. But everything is received how? By faith. That's why Jesus said, he told the woman, uh, it's your blood. Woman, your faith has made you whole. When the two, four guys were carrying the guy on, on, the, uh, on the stretcher and they said him before Jesus, the Bible said he saw their what? Because that's what he's looking for. He's not looking to see how many hamburgers you turned down. He's not looking to see how long you pray in the morning. Don't get me wrong. You need to turn down some hamburgers and you need to pray in the morning. He told blind bought a man. Blind bought a man came to him. Lord, Lord, Lord. He said, what do you want? He said, I want to see my son. He said, your faith that made you well. So a lot of time, a lot of time, and, and, and this is what God told me to minister because a lot of time, and this is good. It's good. But make sure, make sure you're exercising faith while you're praying and fasting. Planning and fasting is wonderful, but if I'm not doing it in faith, it's a diet. We lose a few pounds and gain them all back. <laughs> Are you following me? So I want to um, I want to talk to you. Faith is important. I mean, and and, and brother three, you know, I've, I've been preaching faith. You told me that's why you came to this church. God brought you here and taught you faith. And I've been teaching it and, and living it, and and it's so, I'm learning so much more. It's, oh shoot, I don't even know if I'll say this. Y'all might run me out of here if I say this. But I'm going to say it. It's my church, ain't it? <laughs> okay, I'm just playing. But see, a lot of times, We'll, we'll, we'll tell young people, well, you know, you got you to gotta put a lot of time in before God brings you to that level. And then God reminded me. He said, you remember, remember, remember what I did? Y'all wasn't that old, but y'all had faith. Because we had shut the world off. You don't have to wait. I told him, uh, you don't have to wait till you get, you can, you can get this, you can, do, you can do what we did in two weeks if you got faith. Don't you let somebody tell you you got to have time and grade in the kingdom. The kingdom doesn't work like that. You don't have to have time and grade and have to have gone through all this. If you got faith, baby, I mean, if you got faith, you can pull that thing out. And that's what the devil don't want you to do. He wants you so caught up in, in, in what everybody else doing and all of that instead of, instead of working on and building your faith to where you and God got it going on. Now that's what fasting and prayer would do. It will put you over into a place where you're like, okay, God. And so a lot of times stuff happens, and, and it's going to happen. It's going to happen this year. Um, people, people, some of y'all going to get some prayers. This is so fast. <laughs> some, some of y'all going to get some that. <laughs> some, some stuff going to happen so fast. This, these next two weeks, you're going to be like, oh, my God, let's keep on not eating. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be some stuff happening because... Because it, it, if you listen to me, because you're going to be, your faith going to be so tight. God responds by faith. He responds to faith. I don't care how old you can get saved tonight, exercise faith tomorrow, 
That's why you, you ever see people, they just come in the church, and all of a sudden, I see it all the time. I'm the pastor. I see it all the time. People come in here, and they, they ain't been here, don't even know, don't even know where Genesis is yet. And, and they hear a lesson, and they're like, bam, I'm going to do that. They call me, pastor, guess what happened? Faith. And so what fasting does, and this is why we do it, it helps us to unclutter our mind from all the unbelief that comes in. And that's what I want to talk about. Okay, how do we receive? Okay, thank you. Now, go to Matthew chapter 17. We, now, we, we've gone through these before, but I think it's going to mean a lot more to you now. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. It takes faith to bring into your life what God has provided. If we don't have faith in the word, the word ain't going to work. Okay. Now. Okay, Matthew 17, uh, um, verse 15. The, the, the father brought this demon son, um, not demon son, the son that had a demon. Well, and the disciple couldn't help him. And verse 15 said, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is epileptic and severe, suffers severely, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, they could not cure him. And uh, verse 17, when Jesus answered and said, Oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. So, as I always say, Jesus now is responding to the ineffectiveness because God wants us, to, he wants his disciples to get results. And Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of him and the child was cured from that very hour. And the disciples came to him privately and said, Lord, why could we not cast him out? Now, that's a valid question, right? Okay. Um, and Jesus went on to say in verse 20. Well, let me, let me stop because I want to emphasize. It wasn't because, well, let's look at what Jesus said, verse 20. Jesus said to them, because of your what? Amen. Now, what he didn't say is because you didn't have any faith. He didn't say, well, because you didn't have faith. Well, Pastor, you just told us. If I have faith, I can receive. I know I did. Well, well you, now you're telling me they had faith. They didn't receive. I know I did. But Jesus is telling them why they didn't receive, even though they had faith. So you can have faith and not receive. If you got something else. Yeah. 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 Jesus didn't say they didn't have faith. They had faith. That's why they tried. How many people, how many people you, you try to cast the devil out of? Yeah, okay, you try it, yeah, because you have faith. You don't just be, in the name of Jesus, come on, if you don't have faith. Folks that don't have faith don't do stuff like that. So they have faith, that's why they tried it. But they had something else that cut the faith off, that short-circuited the faith. And this is what prayer and fasting does. This is why you're going to see so many results these next two weeks, three weeks. Verse 20, Jesus said, because of your what? That's what they had. He said, for sure, I say to you. Well, they asked the question, why couldn't we do it? And Jesus answered them, didn't he? And he said, the reason was what? Okay. For sure, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will move a mountain. It don't take much because you got the faith I gave you. Move from here to there and it will move. And what will be impossible? Nothing. Golly. Nothing will be impossible for you. Verse 21. Moreover, this kind does not go out. This kind of what? Unbelief does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Jesus is saying, this unbelief you have allowed to come in has short-circuited the faith that you do have. So you don't need more faith. You need less unbelief. And the way that you get less unbelief or, or eradicate or eliminate the unbelief that you have, one, the best way, he says, is through prayer and fasting. Because now I'm unplugging from the world. The Bible says that um, I can let the cares of the world enter in. And they do what? They 
choke the word. So Jesus saying, this time prayer and fasting, where you pull away, where you put the world on hold for a season, and you cut off the flow of, of negativity, negativity, the flow of, of curses, the flow of, 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 of demonic influences, the flow of the, the, the wisdom of the world. You cut that flow off. You cut that flow of nasty attitudes and you cut off that flow of words that tear down instead of build up. And you cut off that flow of exposing your, your spirit man and your mental complex to, to demonic stuff. You cut that off and, and now what you're doing is you're, you're getting in the word of God. You're getting the radiation of the word of God now. Now you're in God's presence. You're talking to God about stuff and, and God is able to talk to you now because those other voices have been silenced. And, and the more you silence those voices, the more you can hear God. And the more you hear God, now your faith becomes purer. It becomes purer. That's why the devil wants to get you. That's why he wants the media. All the media. And that's why he wants to say that every person spends four hours a day watching television. Well, that's okay if you're watching something that's going to feed your faith instead of suffocate it. And, and you know, oh, say go ahead on, man. And so what happens is, think about this. If you don't want to get pregnant, don't have what? Now, if you don't have sex, you can't what? Conceive, can you? Okay. Uh, a, a woman can't get pregnant if she don't have sex, right? Well, unless they do that other thing. That, uh... Okay, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. The thing that we allow into our minds and into our belief system. See, you can't be tempted with something you don't first think about. And see, this heart of yours, the Bible, it's the production center of your life. And if you let stuff get out in your production center, like sperm in a woman's, you know, production center. You understand what I'm saying? I don't even know. Okay, I'm going to just keep looking over here because... I ain't going to look at her right now. But no. But see, what happens is, saints of God, they're like, well, I ain't, I ain't going gonna, gonna to do that. Yeah, but you're, 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 you're exposing yourself to stuff, and there's a conception taking place in your, in your mind and in your mental complex. And you can keep saying, I ain't going to do what, but you, you're pregnant. You can say all you want. I ain't gonna. No, you already conceived. Fasting unplugs you. See, there's some of us in here tonight. Well, why do I do this? You got pregnant. You can see. You watching the, them, some of them shows? See, okay. So you can't watch all them shows where, 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 where. Well, the lady that worked for the man, she's slipping in his office, giving him some, and he's married. Can I say that? Okay. Giving him some, and he got a wife at home, and you can't be watching adultery and fornication, folk, 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 you know, they, they ain't nobody married now, and they got two people, two of the same people in the bed with somebody else. You can't watch all that and not conceive nasty. <laughs> you can't I don't care how much you come to church Because you ain't in church that long I wish I could keep my four hours You know, four or five hours a week I only got you for a couple Some of y'all, I only got you for one But but here's the thing, and this is why people, this is why, this is why some people, you ever, you, you know, you go to, you go to a, like a TDJ conference, boy, you come home, man, 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 you, man, you hotter, man, you hotter than horseradish, man. You stronger than horseradish because you've been in that word all week, all morning, night, and you tired, got to catch the bus back to the hotel room, got to get up two hours later, but, but you running on that juice. 
And see, you haven't you haven't been you haven't been talking, and you come, man, you fired up. But then you you can't live there. So you come back home, and slowly but surely, that's, that's why. Okay, see, I'm just when you get off this. If you fast, if you really fast, some of y'all probably DD on y'all shows. As soon, as soon as the fast is over, you're going to go back and watch 21 days the episode. <laughs> Why are you going to do that? you you just going to undo. You might as well eat. No, you just going to undo it. See, because <laughs> I know that's not funny, but that's the truth. But you can't concede. People concede. Now, now this is not bad. I'm just telling you how it works. Because this is, this is what we're doing in the good. This is how you're going to get your miracle. This is how you're going to get your breakthrough. Amen. I'm just telling you, I'm, you know, I'm, this is how the, how the game, this is how the system works. So we work this for good. That's why, you know, I know y'all get tired of me talking about, you, know, you got to, you can't just let anybody be in your ear. Because word, you, because you can conceive and words are spirit. Yes. You can't you can't be talking to anybody and letting them just constantly, constantly. Cause this thought I'm like, well, you know, it ain't, we just, you know, next thing you know, them words to break you down. I used to say all the time, boy, the the hook is in the conversation. You remember I say that? Cause I used to believe that when I was, you know, yeah. The hook was in the con- all I had was a conversation. <laughs> She kept listening to me. <laughs> well, it's the truth. That's all I had. She said, yeah, you sure? That's it. That's all I had. I tell you what I believe now. I believe that anybody will listen to me over a period of time, I can take you from zero to 60 in faith. If you listen to me. I know everybody ain't trying to listen, but I'm just talking about the ones who are. Uh, I believe the hook is in the conversation. You ever? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so he said this kind doesn't come out except by prayer and fasting. So, so we're unplugging because, and as we unplug from the stuff of the world, and golly, man, if we unplug the stuff that won't, it won't, you won't think about. You won't think about some stuff. You just won't think about it. You won't think about it. I know it's hard for a lot of your, your mothers and, or, or, and dads that need to cook you know, for your young kids. Now, you're going to be thinking about food a little bit more than us. Because I don't got to cook for nobody. <laughs> so I ain't got to go through the kitchen smelling all that. But some of y'all are going to like, oh, Lord, Jesus. Ooh. Then I get up here and talk about Weeby Burger. You're like, oh, Lord, don't. It was all I can do tonight, Pastor, just get here without eating something. Well, because you're exposed to it, you want it. Now, the flip side. You get a promise from God, and you expose yourself to it, and expose yourself to it, and expose yourself to it, and expose yourself to it. Winston tastes good like a what? Right. And you don't even smoke, but you know that. But you know what? Because you keep hearing that word, that jingle, get inside of you. You keep hearing it over and over. Some of y'all been coming here. How you doing? Bless, highly favored, empowered to prosper, and prospering, and walking in divine health, and blessed to be a blessing, and we can't lose with the faith that we use. Right. Some of y'all never read that. You, never, you don't know where that's found. You didn't write that down. But you heard it enough. And now that's in you. See, that's the way that word is. That's why during this fast, you shut, shut all that stuff up. Listen, if the, world, if the world come to an end, you'll find out about it. Yes, sir. You don't need to be... <laughs> you don't need to keep checking the news to see what's going on. I mean, yeah, but, but, but I want you to... Ne- and whatever... Whatever you, whatever you got, God, I got, to, I got to have it. I see the promise. I gotta have it. That's how you get it. 
We don't do this because it's the thing to do. We do this because I want to jump start your year to where you had the best year you ever had in your life. And not only that, but now you know how to keep the best year and just go. You don't, this ain't just for January. Whatever you, whatever you don't want in your life, starve it. Cut it off. That's just, whatever you don't want, cut it off. And if you know somebody that got what you don't want, cut them off. They said, listen, I got to sacrifice this relationship for a season because I'm working on something. You ain't working on it. You part of the problem. So I love you, but I got to go. Okay. Um. I've been talking that long. Uh, Jesus. That's what, okay, go to uh, Romans 4. Let's talk about this. <laughs> ah, oh, fuck. Okay. I just thought of something. But I ain't gonna, I'm not going to say it. I might say it in a minute, though. I'm sure you had to get these promises. I'm telling you, we, I'm like, yeah, that happened to us. We weren't even saved that long. What was the difference? Did God take a liking to us? Oh, we, we, we did this, and we didn't, we didn't even know to do this, but our faith got so pure. So I'm getting back to that thing, man. Okay, Romans chapter 4. This is, y'all you know, know God promised Abraham a son, right? Now, what I want to do in my remainder is I want to show you what faith to receive looks like. Okay? And if you're interested, I would pay really good attention right now. Now, Romans 4.19 says, And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old. And the deadness of Sarah's womb. He didn't do what? Consider. Consider means, hmm, think about it, study it, analyze it, turn it over, think about it, study it, talk about it, go on the internet, I, if, if Abraham did not, if, if considering he would go on, he would Google it and see if anybody had a child at a hundred years old. <laughs> he didn't even go there. He didn't even spend time thinking about why he couldn't have the promise. He didn't consider Sarah's body. He didn't consider his body because he had a what promise. Eight. The way to receive by faith. You consider the promise, not the problem. A lot of times when you talk to people and you say, man, I don't believe in God for this. First thing they'll do is they come up with a lot of ways of why that possibly maybe can't happen for you. They'll tell you all the shortcomings or, and it's amazing how they say, well, you know, I knew somebody that that, that didn't happen. Well, what about the folks that did happen for so he didn't consider, he, probably, he didn't sit there and study and, and analyze the problem over and over and over. He, didn't, he probably didn't let people tell him over and over and over. <laughs> it, it wasn't that he didn't know his body was dead. He knew the body was dead. But he chose to look at something else. So what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying when you have a promise from God, whatever, whatever you, you, you see that God has for you, that belongs to you, you got to take that promise. And that thing got to become, brother back here would tell me, last time he was here, he said, you preached a message and you talk about hold on to that word and don't ever let it go. That was years ago, so you ain't been here in a minute. You ain't been here in a while. That's okay. But, but you remember that word. That's all that matters. But anyway, but, but you got to take that promise. And I don't know, what do people think about every day? Food. <laughs> Thank you, Deborah. Okay, food. 
But you got to take that promise. And every day, every day, every day, feed yourself with it. Every day. Every day. Every day. Several times a day. Watch this. All day. Because you can worry all day. That's what the Bible calls meditation. And so, and so, yes, 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 they told me this. Yes, I got this report. Yes, there it is right here. But I'm not denying it. I'm just not considering that. That's not what I want. Because if I keep considering it and keep talking about it and telling everybody that, that I see about it, I keep that thing become bigger and bigger and bigger in my life, in my thought process. It becomes bigger and now, now that unbelief is moving in and faith is having a hard time breathing. So, so the environment that I go in, the environment that I stay in, the environment, the things I listen to, the music I listen to, the magazines I read, uh, the people I listen to and hang around, all of that, all of that plays into unbelief. All right. Are y'all thinking or what? Okay. So he did not consider his own body. Well, how do you not consider your own body? You, you don't consider it. Well, it hurts. I know it hurts. And take some Excedrin or whatever. Take some pain medicine to make it, to make you not feel it. But make sure you're taking that promise to get rid of it. So it didn't say that Abraham didn't know their bodies were having issues. It just said he didn't consider it. He didn't put a whole lot of emphasis on it. How many of y'all know the battlefield of a Christian? It's right here. This is where you win and lose. This is why Romans 12 says renew your mind so that you can prove what the good itself on perfect will of God. See, what you think about, you bring about. Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinks, so is he. What you think about, you, 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 you bring about. Okay, all right. What, let, as you sit here tonight, right now, what did you come in here thinking about? What do you think about? Well, you probably didn't think about it now. I started talking. But, see, <laughs> what do you think about right now? What do you, th what do you think about right now? What do you think about? What do you think about? What do you think about? What you think about? Let's keep reading. No, oh, I said this. Either we will think about the word, the promise, or we'll think about the contradictions to the promise. Well, Pastor, what is, I'm thinking about this. What if somebody come with a bad report? They come with a bad report. Give them your report. Or don't say anything. So what did Abraham focus on? Focus on the promise. I'm showing you what faith looks like. Because a lot of people say, I got faith. I'm showing you what it looks like. Faith locked in on the promise. And see, and the people that live this way, other folks who are not educated, spiritually educated but say stuff like oh lord there you go you been down there listening to friendly ain't you <laughs> yeah well don't let people that don't read the bible kind of tell you how to live the bible because it's right here don't let people that don't read it try to tell you how to live it yeah Cause Abraham didn't okay look at verse 20 Hmm. He did not waver, vastly back and forth, at the promise of God through what? There it is. But was strengthened in faith doing what? How do you do that? Lord, I thank you for your promise. You're bigger than anything that comes at me. I glorify you because you are my answer. You knew what I need before I even showed up with the need because you know what I need before I even pray. 
I give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. The same God that gave Abraham a baby at 100 years old is the same God that can get this knot off my thigh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he glorified it. Give me this in the Amplified, please. I like the way to say it. Now, remember what, what did Jesus say was the reason why the disciples couldn't get it done? Okay. Very good, class. Watch this. No unbelief or distrust made him waver. Unbelief will make you waver. Unbelief will make you waver. That's why he said, no, fasting and prayer gets us out. See, now, now as we, we're just starting and, and you're, you're working through it. So be patient with yourself. But eventually, no unbelief or distrust will make you waver or question God concerning this promise. Hallelujah. Unbelief will attack the promise and it will attack your, 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 your mind and it will cause you, you wasting your time doing all of that. You're wasting your time. How do you get, you know why people don't, don't tithe and give money to the kingdom like they should? <laughs> okay. Unbelief and distrust. They don't trust God. People that don't sow financially like they probably should, that just says, I don't trust God. I don't trust you in this area. I don't trust you here. Yeah, because he says, he says the promise is what? You give to the kingdom, you'll always have all sufficiency in all things. You'll be enriched in everything and in every way so that you can have seed for sowing, bread for your food, so that you can give them to every good work. Well, he didn't ask you to give everything away. He just want to put you in a position where every good thing that comes along, you can help finance it. Anyway, okay, so he did not waver. He did not waver through unbelief. He didn't distrust through unbelief. Okay, I don't think I'm going to have time to go to it. But the book of James says, a double-minded man is unstable where? And that man ought not think he can receive Anything. from God. So, so, so one of the things that fasting does, it puts you in a place of locking in and staying locked in on the promise. Shutting, shutting out and exposing myself to stuff that really doesn't matter. And, and well, okay, that too, but stuff that's contradictory to the promise. Sometimes, you know, I watch a lot of preachers. I like preachers. I like preaching. And, but some of them, I just, pow, that's a remote. Because I can't, I can't, man, I have to open myself up to you. You're preaching. You're, you're a preacher. But you're saying some stuff that ain't in the Bible. I can, pow. Because I can't listen to that. <laughs> it's contradictory to the word. And I don't need my faith contaminated right now. There's some sermons I listen to 15, 20, 30 times. Why? Because I want, I'm exposing myself and exposing myself. And it's amazing how you, you hear something different every time you listen. Because our minds are like sponges. We pick up so much stuff. Some of y'all listen to me now. Well, you're looking at me, but you're not listening to me. Yeah, some of you are not listening to me. I, I watch this lady Sunday. And she's back just texting or something the whole time. S sitting right over there, right over there where y'all sit. I'm like, dog, why you even come? But I used to, I used to call them out. I don't think nah, that's They want to bring their gas, come over here and text. That's their business. But, but, because we're made that way. And the enemy, give me a, a First Corinthians. 10. I think y'all are second Corinthians 10, I'm sorry. Because there's an enemy. He knows how this thing works. <laughs> he knows how it works. And so the Bible says, look at 2 Corinthians 10, 5 says, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the what? Yeah. 
And he said, bring every what? Into captivity. Every what? So while you're sitting here listening to me, there's thoughts coming that ain't got nothing to do with what I'm talking about. <laughs> Baby said. <laughs> yeah, had nothing to do with what I'm talking about. And it's trying to exalt itself above the thoughts that I'm sowing out there. And if it and if if you let it, it will rob you of what God is trying to get to you. There was a time when people used to buy CDs and tapes and listen to them over and over and over. I don't know. I said, either my preaching got bad or folks like, I don't need all that. The folks used to buy these tapes around here. Now nah, y'all don't buy them. People don't buy them as much as they used to. Huh? It's on the app. No, it was before we had it on the app. It was before we had it on the app. But, but that's okay. That's okay. I mean, that's their business. That's their business. But, but he said, you got you to gotta cast down. When them thoughts come, uh oh, -uh, nope, in the name of Jesus. Right. I mean, you're sitting here, you know, you're sitting there, and, and, and pastor talking, and, you know, you, and, yeah, said, yeah, shoot. I wonder if he's going to be done by, by 8, 15, because, you know, I got stuff to do. I got. And, and so, you know, you just missed the point. But you got to, uh uh, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm right here. Because this is feeding my spirit. I don't need something to come and just, the devil, he'll shoot them dark of contradictory right in the midst of you getting your answer. Right in the midst of you getting your answer. He'll shoot one of those dark, one of those arguments. Well, I don't know if that really means that. I don't know. I don't know if that really means that. I think he just and exalts himself against the knowledge of God. He said, what we have to do? Bring every thought into what? Yes. To the obedience of Christ. The mind, the, the battlefield right here. Your experience, somebody else's experience, what you heard somebody say, um, uh, all of that is coming against the word of God. I'm telling you how to receive by faith, what faith looks like. It's not passive. You got to go to work on that thing. Yeah. So, we cannot allow the sewage of the world to just flow into our mind and our emotions without it affecting our unbelief level. Unbelief comes just like faith comes comes by what hearing. hearing and hearing by the word of God all right now um, let's do a little test so I can know if I have unbelief or not y'all ready <laughs> okay I did this before so you may just play again unbelief is present when the following things is evident in our lives First of all, fear. This is how I know unbelief is present in my life. Fear that the word won't work. Fearful that the opposite is going to happen. I know God supplies all my needs, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, man. I got to, ooh, I got to shoot. You know, you know, I got to do something. I got to do something. I got to do something because... Well, yeah, you go to work. You got to go to work. Because if you don't work, you don't eat. eat. Okay, so you need to work. If you like to eat, you need to work. But, yeah, but that's not what I'm talking about, Pastor. What if, what if this, well, yeah, I understand that, but you can't be in fear. Fear just attracts. The spirit of fear comes from the enemy. So, so I'm in unbelief. If I'm in fear, how do I know if I'm in unbelief? Worry. Worry is, is meditating on the contrary. Worry is negative thoughts, negative expectations. I remember I used to worry, and I used to worry about stuff that never even happened. It's amazing how your mind goes to worst case scenario. And that same worry I can use to believe God with. So unbelief, I know unbelief is present if I'm a worrier. 
Okay? How do I know unbelief is present? When I'm stressed out over a situation and I'm consumed with the problem. That's all I can talk about. That's all I talk about. You want to go to gym workout and, and work on the abs, but all I can talk about is my problem. I work that into the conversation somewhere. You know you're in faith. Well, you know unbelief is present when you're just consumed by something that happened and you just sit over and over and people even tell you, listen, can you not talk about that anymore? But you don't even know you're talking about it. I, I, I got a, a friend of mine, uh, you know, and I, you know, going, uh, uh, and I said, look, you talked about that already. You already talked about that. If you bring it up again, I'm going to hang up. I don't need that. We talked about it. Now, that's some, one thing. If you, you know, I need somebody to talk to. Okay. Okay. I'm somebody to talk to. But we already talked about it. Yeah. <laughs> but we talked about it. I'm talking about the same the same thing, and, and they, they get on that road, that, that road, that, you know, <clears throat> somebody that does that, they don't even realize what they're doing. They don't even realize. See, watch it. This, this system has been conditioned to talk about it. You can get your system conditioned to talk faith. How you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored. Thank y'all. You looking good. I know looking better every time when you see me and mom be looking better. No, you can condition yourself to talk faith. I know people call you crazy. They call you crazy. Listen, I'm t forget all that, man. You're not trying to impress anybody. You're working on building your faith life. We live in a negative world. We live in a world that doesn't care about this until they need a miracle. But, but <clears throat> we live in a world that they don't know that this is diametrically opposite. And you can't be... <laughs> You can't be bashful. Well, part of. Okay, I don't know where it is, but part of receiving by faith, you got to talk it. You don't just think it. Now you got to, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. You got to, we believe, therefore we speak. You got to talk faith. Got to get your mouth saved. That's why Abraham, see, see, when you're in faith, you want one of the loudest praises up in the house. And then when you come through and you start testifying, folks are like, I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know you was going through all that. You're not supposed to. I just let, let people that know how to talk with me. No, you can't let anybody, you can't let anybody know. Now they'll have you in the grave before you. So unbelief is present when I'm thinking more about the situation than the promise. I'm spending more time with the situation than the promise. I'm giving attention to stuff. Now, give me, a, uh, give me Isaiah 26, 3, and I'll close with it. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Who should ever say, say and die not in his heart, believe those things, what you said? Okay, this is, this is where it starts. This is where I want to stop with this one. Isaiah 26, 3. I said the battle was between the two ears, didn't I? Okay. The, the Lord will keep him in what? Perfect peace. Who's what? Mind. Okay, okay. Where is the peace coming from? God. Okay. How do I get the peace in my life? My peace is directly linked to what I think about. So I got to keep my focus on God. I got to keep my focus on the things of God. Come on, Pastor. Isn't that a little bit extreme? Yeah. Huh? This extreme. But you want to be extremely blessed? Extremely well, extremely prosperous, extremely at peace. You can get, you can build yourself up to a point so much that when it, whatever happened to you, your mind goes to word first. I believe that. Oh. 
How many of you want results? Yes, sir. Okay. That's how you do it. That's, that's in a nutshell. That's a quick faith lesson. Now, here's what I'm asking you to do for 21 days. Those y'all that want to play. This ain't no cult, so I ain't going to come to your house and check to see if you do it. <laughs> But 21 days, well, what, we ain't 21 now. I want you to spend time, no, spend a lot of time, a lot of time, as you can, meditating on the Word of God. Particularly, if you got issues, certain issues, just spend a lot of time feeding on the Word, watching videos. Reading book, listening to the CD, listening, you know, take 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 a couple of days off work. Huh? 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 Take it off from work? You take off work, go to Hawaii? Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, take take a couple of days off. Take some me time. Or and just say, listen, listen. I'm asking you to do this. I'm I'm asking you to do this. You know. You know, sacrifice some TV. Sacrifice some TV. Sacrifice some 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 social media time. <laughs> sacrifice some of talking to somebody. Now, if, you want, if they're talking faith and talking about work, fine. But somebody just talking about nothing. Feeding your, no, sacrifice that for 21 days. I'm asking you to do that. What else I'm asking you to do? Yeah, I just said spend time. Spend a lot of time doing that. Feeding on the promises. Exposing yourself to the, to the ready, you, you know, I got, I got a couple books I'm reading that I, I said I'm going to read these. Um, 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 I got a routine. Um, you know, one thing, every morning, every morning, praying an hour, praying an hour, just in the Holy Spirit, and then, then got some other things in the, you know, why? Because, I tell him, in the meeting last night, I am, <laughs> I'm upgrading and increasing my life. I'm upgrading my life. I'm upgrading Every area, I can, well, several areas. You know how you get upgrade 2.0, 2.0? It's time for me to upgrade. I want my life, I, I, I determine the quality of my life and I determine the impact that my life will make. So, so I said, I need to upgrade some things. So I'm, I'm going to work on me. I'm increasing my value in the planet, on the planet. Yeah, that's what, I, I, that's what I'm working on. You don't get paid by the hour in life. In life, you get paid by the value you put into the hour. Uh, yeah, you, you don't get paid by the, in life, you don't get paid by the, you get paid by the value you put in the hour. That's why there's some people make $1,000 an hour, some people make $10 an hour. It's the value they put in that hour. I want to raise my value on the planet. I want to raise my value in the kingdom of God. Oh, I probably wouldn't put to tell y'all all that. But, but that's what I'm working on every day. I'm working on walking in love, loving people. I'm working on that. I, I want to upgrade my love walk. I, want to, I told him I'm upgrading my preaching. I'm going to be preaching better up in here. No, no, I, I'm, my, my gifts, my talent, I know my gifts and talents are, and I'm working, I'm upgrading them. I'm going to be a better everything. I'm increasing my value in the planet, on the planet. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. And I'm, I want to encourage you. I hope, I hope that stimulates you. Go to, work, go to work on you. And especially, you know, I'm preaching. My job ain't going to never be taken away. What I mean by that is, I, I listened to this guy, and he said, in, in 10 years, in 10 years, 30% of jobs are going to be, are, you're going to, 
are going to be lost to what's called mechanized intelligence. Machine. I want to go to the, I went to the parking lot at, uh, at the airport the other day. Ain't nobody out there. They could call in there or, or whatever. That was somebody job five years ago. Wasn't that somebody job five years ago? Yeah. So upgrade. Listen, don't get by, get in front of that curve. I mean, you know, I mean, we're gonna. Always, I don't think they're gonna have no robot preaching. <laughs> but, but you know what? You, you know what? Of course, they, you know, um, these recorded. Remember, you know, you know how you call a place now, and you gotta press fifteen buttons before you talk to somebody. That was somebody's job. And and then and then and then. When you do get somebody, you can't understand them. <laughs> you know why? They're over in Saudi Arabia. Okay. Receiving by faith while we're on the fast. Did you get something out of that tonight? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Let's 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 uh. Before you do that, let's, and we're going to receive, well, we'll receive offering too. We're going to receive offering. But stand up. Let's seal this. Let's seal this. I, I felt like I gave you a lot. I hope, I hope you were able to, to, to get your word. Get your word. I want us to unclutter, untangle our lives and put this flesh in its place. Thank you, Lord. I want you to, let's, let's, let's declare this together. <sighs> And if you're not fasting, I, I want to encourage you to, to come on, join with us. There's so much God wants to do. There's so much that he's entrusting us to do. And we can do it. But we need to do it by his power. Say this with me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am. I am. What you say I am. I can do. What you say I can do. Father, I thank you. And from this day forward, I plan on exposing myself to the radiation of the Word of God. I will believe your Word. I will speak your Word. I will act on your Word. I will upgrade myself and increase my value. In the, kingdom, in the kingdom and on the planet, on the planet. In, Jesus in Jesus name okay I'm not dumb in Jesus name, in Jesus name this, year, this year I will see more, I will see more than I've seen in the last five years those things that seem to get away from me will manifest they will manifest in the next 60 days. In the next 60 days. Now let's give him a shout of praise. Lord, I thank you. 